Fellow gardeners, I need to share something that completely changed how I view my garden. Last spring, I was aggressively pulling what I thought were problem weeds from my vegetable beds when I noticed something incredible. Every spot where these so-called weeds had been growing was absolutely teeming with earthworms. The soil was darker, richer, and practically crumbling with life in my hands. That's when it hit me. I'd been destroying some of nature's most efficient soil improvement systems. These six weeds aren't garden enemies, they're earthworm magnets that are working overtime to build the healthy soil ecosystem we're all desperately trying to create. Before we dive into these miraculous plants, let's talk about why earthworms are absolute soil gold. These little engineers are processing organic matter 24-7, creating nutrient-rich castings that are perfectly balanced for plant uptake. One earthworm can process its body weight in organic matter daily, and their tunneling action creates the ideal soil structure for root development and water infiltration. The connection between certain plants and earthworms isn't accidental. These plants create the perfect conditions that earthworms crave, consistent moisture, organic matter, and protection from predators. When you see these plants thriving, you're looking at a sign of soil health, not soil problems. I know I know dandelions are public enemy number one for most homeowners, but hear me out. These golden beauties are actually performing soil rehabilitation services that would cost you hundreds of dollars if you hired a landscaping crew. Dandelions send their tap roots deep into compacted soil, sometimes up to 15 feet down, breaking up hard pan layers that prevent water and air circulation. As these roots decompose, they create channels for earthworms to travel and work. The decomposing root matter feeds soil microorganisms, which in turn, feed earthworms. I've started leaving dandelion patches in less visible areas of my garden, and the earthworm activity in these zones is remarkable. The soil structure has improved dramatically, and I've noticed better water retention during dry spells. If you must remove them, do it after they've had a chance to work their magic for at least one growing season. Plantain, that flat ribbed leaf plant that grows in your lawn, is another earthworm factory disguised as a weed. This humble plant thrives in compacted soil where nothing else will grow, making it the perfect pioneer species for soil recovery. What makes plantain so special is its fibrous root system that creates an intricate network of organic matter as it grows and dies back seasonally. Earthworms absolutely love this buffet of decomposing roots. I've observed that areas with established plant and colonies have significantly higher earthworm populations than surrounding areas. The plant also acts as a living mulch, keeping soil temperatures consistent and moisture levels stable, exactly what earthworms need to thrive. Instead of viewing plantain as a nuisance, start seeing it as nature's soil rehabilitation crew hard at work. Clover might be the most beneficial weed you can have in your garden ecosystem. As a legume, Clover fixes nitrogen from the air and deposits it in the soil through its root nodules. But here's what most gardeners don't realize. This nitrogen-fixing process creates incredibly rich organic matter that earthworms can't resist. White clover and red clover both excel at this, but I found that white clover integrates better into existing garden spaces without becoming too aggressive. The constant cycle of root growth, death, and regrowth provides a steady food source for earthworms while improving soil nitrogen levels naturally. I now intentionally seed clover in pathways and around fruit trees. The earthworm activity in these areas has transformed previously poor soil into rich, dark earth that holds moisture beautifully and supports incredible plant growth. Purslane often gets dismissed as a succulent weed, but it's actually creating perfect microenvironments for earthworms. This plant's thick, fleshy leaves create natural shade and help retain soil moisture, two critical factors for earthworm survival, especially during hot summer months. What's fascinating about purslane is how it grows in a spreading mat pattern, creating a living mulch that protects earthworms from temperature fluctuations and predators. The plant's shallow root system constantly sheds fine organic matter that feeds beneficial soil microorganisms, which then support larger earthworm populations. I've started allowing purslane to grow in designated areas of my vegetable garden, particularly around heat-sensitive crops. The soil beneath these purslane patches consistently shows higher earthworm activity and better moisture retention than exposed soil areas. Lamb's Quarters is one of those plants that gardeners love to hate, 
but it's actually performing valuable services as a dynamic accumulator. This plant pulls nutrients from deep in the soil profile and concentrates them in its leaves. When these leaves drop and decompose, they create nutrient-rich patches that earthworms flock to. The plant grows quickly and produces abundant organic matter, making it particularly valuable in areas where you're trying to build soil biology fast. I've noticed that lamb's quarters tends to appear in areas where the soil needs the most help. It's like nature's way of sending in the repair crew. Rather than immediately pulling every lamb's quarters plant, I now allow some to grow to maturity in areas where I'm actively building soil. The earthworm populations in these areas consistently outperform other parts of my garden. Chickweed is the unsung hero of cool season soil building. This delicate looking plant creates dense mats that provide perfect habitat for earthworms during cooler months when they're most active. The constant shedding of fine organic matter from chickweed provides steady nutrition for soil microorganisms and earthworms alike. What I love about chickweed is how it naturally dies back in hot weather, leaving behind a layer of organic matter just when earthworms need protection from heat stress. It's like nature's perfectly timed mulch delivery system. I now encourage chickweed growth in areas where I want to build earthworm populations quickly. The results have been consistently impressive with noticeably improved soil structure and fertility in chickweed-dominated areas. The key to harnessing these earthworm factories isn't to let your garden become completely wild, but rather to work strategically with these plants. Designate specific areas where these beneficial weeds can thrive, perhaps edges of beds, pathways, or areas you're actively trying to rehabilitate. Remember, healthy soil is the foundation of successful gardening and earthworms are among your most valuable allies in building that foundation. These six plants are nature's way of creating the perfect conditions for earthworm populations to flourish and improve your soil. The next time you see dandelions, plantain, clover, purslane, lamb's quarters, or chickweed in your garden, pause before reaching for the weeder. Consider whether that area might benefit from a season or two of natural soil improvement, courtesy of these earthworm-attracting powerhouses. Ready to transform your relationship with garden weeds and build incredibly healthy soil? Subscribe to Soil Sensei for more eye-opening insights that will revolutionize how you think about gardening. Share this article with fellow gardeners who are ready to work with nature instead of against it. Your soil and your earthworms will thank you. Soil Sensei